Hi, this is Frank Taylor coming to you with another episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And today I'm going to go back to talk about this guy right here, the Eastern Newt. I've done videos already on the Eastern Newt and its life cycle and talking about the different stages. So if you haven't seen that, find that episode and watch it. Well, it's been raining here for several days. In fact, it's been raining every day all week. And what I understood from reading about salamanders is that many of them are nocturnal and they're more active when it rains. So I had high hopes that I would find some salamanders during this rainy time. Well, I'm walking down the trail and right in front of me yesterday, in the middle of the day, a little light rain, is this guy right here. And I thought, what is he doing out in the middle of the day? And he was so easy to find, right? Because he was bright orange. So then I got to thinking, what is this guy doing out in the middle of the day? He'd be a tasty morsel for anybody to eat. And it's not like he's camouflaged. A lot of organisms are camouflaged, have colors that blend into the background and make them harder to see so that predators can't find them. But this guy was completely out in the open. So I picked him up, wet my hands first, brought him back, putting him in a pen with some moss. And I Googled it and did some research, just like I want you to do. When you find the name of an organism, research it, read about it, see what more you can learn about this particular organism. Well, as I did my research, I found out that this stage of the salamander is far, far more toxic than its other stages. It lives as a newt in a pond and has dark colors for its first year of life and has gills. And then it changes into this red F stage and lives in woodlands and anywhere from two years to, to seven years. And the final stage, it returns to the water. But of all those stages, this stage is the most toxic. And this stage is bright orange. So I started looking around at and thinking about, well, you know, there's the monarch butterfly in the insect world that is black and orange. And monarch butterflies are toxic. And birds learn that that black and orange butterfly is not good to eat. A bird that eats a monarch butterfly will get sick and sometimes actually throw up right after it eats it. And then I was looking that all the animals that feed on milkweed, the monarch butterfly is toxic because it feeds on toxic milkweed. And milkweed is toxic to prevent it from be, it being eaten by herbivores. But some insects that have adapted to this toxin and can feed on milkweed without getting sick, take this toxin in their bodies. And milkweed bugs are also black and orange. And then there's a species of aphid that feeds on milkweed that is also toxic, and it's orange. There's other organisms, like ladybugs, will be red and black or orange and black, and they have a very, very bitter taste. And they advertise to other organisms there's not good to eat. Now let's go look at the reptile kingdom. There's the coral snake with bands of black, yellow, and red also advertising it's, uh, it's a, a dangerous organism and you don't want to uh, mess with that. Think about yellow jackets, black and yellow, bumblebees, orange and black. So there's this universal warning coloration in nature. And biologists even give it uh, a name. It's called aposematism. And I'll spell it up on the screen here so you can see it. And what aposematism is about is a way of advertising to predators that, hey, I'm toxic. You don't want to eat me. So let's go take a look closer at this salamander, the red F stage, that it's most toxic stage of its life. And it uses that toxin and advertises itself as being dangerous. So that's why this little guy could walk around without a care in the world in the middle of the day. Let's take a look at them now. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's the make this invasive. There's a dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen and it's So here's my terrarium that I temporarily keep some of the animals that 
I find I'll keep them for a couple days to learn about them, look at about them, handle them, and then I put them back exactly where I find them. This is a really great terrarium because it's very well ventilated but it's a very secure top to it. I can see into it. I always put what would be in the organism's habitat. In this case, it would be wet leaves from the forest or some mosses. And then when I handle salamanders, I always keep some water here because salamanders breathe through their skin. In fact, some of them are so dependent on their skin to breathe that, that they don't even have lungs. So I always want to wet my hands before I pick up a salamander so that my dry skin doesn't take away any of his protective coating and he can stay moist and healthy. So I'm going to gently hold him here for a second so we can look at some of his features up close. One of the characteristic features you can see very well on this one is the row of dots along the side on his upper side. And they're always surrounded by a black circle and have a red or yellow orangey center to them. And when this guy lived, when this guy lived in the pond, he was a very dark green color was camouflaged in with the background with dark colors and when he emerged from the pond he went through this change or or morph into a this bright bright orange color so you can see now with this bright color he really stands out against a green moss background and he really stood out to me when i found him walking across the leafy, leaf-covered, leaf-litter path in a light drizzle. So this stage is also the most toxic stage of all the stages of the newt. Uh, the other stages are somewhat toxic, but at this stage, he's very, very toxic. So that goes along with his bright orange color. The toxin actually has a name. It's called tetrodotoxin. It's a neurotoxin that has a very, very bad taste, but can also have a very bad effect on a predator that eats it. When I was researching this, uh, the Virginia Herpetological Society webpage, which I highly recommend, said that they had done some studies or they had uh, reviewed studies where various organisms that tried to pick this organism up and eat it immediately began doing what they called agitated mouth movements. And they studied garter snakes and crayfish and beetle larvae that tried to eat this. And all of them, after they tried to eat it, dropped it and started doing some very agitated movements with their mouth, showing that it actually, you know, even for them, tasted very, very bad. So newts display aposomatism, a characteristic feature where they use warning colors to warn predators of their toxicity. And this guy is no exception. So a lot of salamanders avoid predation by being active at night, living underground. And they also do both of those things because they need to keep their skin moist. But this salamander species advertises his toxicity just like monarch butterflies do. How yellow jackets and bees worn would be predators that they're not to be messed with. So I'll be releasing this uh, little guy back into the forest in the exact spot where I found him and later today when it starts raining again. And like I said, man, I'm just fascinated be by these guys. I think they're just so cool. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Nature in Your Backyard. And remember, I don't want you to just watch these videos. I want you to go outside and see what you can find. And like I always say, you never know what you're going to find. And when you find it, see if you can identify it. If you find something cool and you don't know what it is, message me. I want to hear from you. If you watch my videos, please press like and, and leave a comment or message. And especially tell me if you watch my video and then went out and found that thing I'm talking about, that animal or plant that's flowering or that tree. And we'll be bringing you episodes throughout the summer. Remember in the Appalachian Mountains, this is one of the most biodiverse regions in the world. I live in Floyd County in Southwest Virginia, and I live in the Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian Mountains are considered the salamander capital of the world. And I love salamander. I've been finding salamanders since I was eight years old, and I'm still fascinated by them. I hope you gain an appreciation for them. 
So thanks for watching. Like my page, leave a comment. If you didn't like it, tell me what I could do to make it better for you. I want to make this experience better for you. But as you know, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.